Hey there, so Brian here. Last video of the series. Uh, this uh, video can also have a dual purpose. If you haven't watched any of my videos and you just want to see how my hog setup looks, and if you're a hog guy and you just want to see what's going on, how I set up my look, my, my, my deal, this is how I set it up. If you uh, want to see more in depth on how I construct this, go back to the beginning of this playlist, this series that I have this video on, and I'll show you step by step how I got all this. Uh, some, and if you don't know anything about the hog, go watch the other series that shows you how to piece, to, it shows you how to, uh, to basically run the hog on a very basic level. It shows you all these different pieces. This series just puts it all together for those, um, uh, to basically the first series to get to the second series, um, uh, videos, I, I guess is the best way of putting it. Uh, my videos aren't really the best, of course, because they're all done on the fly. I, I know that my buddies, this is really a training for my buddies who don't know the hog. Um, but I hope that it's it's helpful to, to other people out there as well. Um, well let's see. Uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So th if you are just joining, you're catching the end of, the, of a very long conversation, if you want to think of it like that. So I'm going to be talking over your head, even if you know the hog because you're missing out on a lot of the conversation I've had throughout the through the entire video series but you could probably follow along as well so this is my visualizer here I have running and uh, just that's you know how I practice at home and I show you how to get a free this all set up for free as well if you haven't watched here is the macro directory uh, just like how I would show you through this recent video series and here's a cue list that I usually keep it on my fourth fader, my fourth master, one, two, three, four, for my quick cues. So I can always see my uh, a description of what cue I was last on when I was punching things really quickly. So that way I can do what I was talking about earlier, that slow crossfade from the, uh, c the scene look that I have set up to this look. Here's a scene directory full of scenes. One row is positions, next row is colors, and this is a few effects. Just recently, I've started adding gobos for more functionality control. This is uh, a scene that runs other scenes. It doesn't have everything programmed. These scenes run all the my time macros over here. You notice that there's a few blank guys up here. They just have dashes. Uh, they don't have anything programmed in that at all. I have learned in the past that when you s start creating scenes and you want to build up my s type of setup, if you plan on doing that, uh, just go ahead and cr clear out the entire row. If you remember earlier in the macro video, I was talking about how you, it's best for you to, uh, you know, I had to sit there and to go scene one through four plus scene one, you know, 16 through 19 plus scene, you know, so on and so on. The reason why I do this because it makes the type, the commands faster for the macro because all it's doing for the macro in this one is scene one through 33 time zero slash zero enter that way it's quicker for it to type in it's uh, I can make changes a lot faster because it still has to take time to run that macro of course right like we saw but you'll notice because it's all in one short command it makes it a lot quicker so the macros will over here will run s just fine even if these guys are blank and what's great about that too is um, if I find a new position setup that I like I can just go hit record scene and then hit go I don't have to set up the macro at all and that's the nice thing about it is that remember I, I had to go scene one uh, through four plus well then I have to go through all six of these guys and go okay and make that scene one through five instead but if I make a change to my scene directory it doesn't matter to the macro directory it doesn't affect it at all um, but if I make but before what I was doing it had like sevens you know th how I learned this the hard way is I had like for example one through you know seven of these and ten of those then I had to go through and every time I added one I had to go through and change all these guys one by one so it makes it a lot quicker when you have a bunch of blank ones hopefully that wasn't too wordy um, what else what else what else uh, here's what I got going down here I have you didn't see the guys in blue that's my from my template page uh, so no matter what page I'm going to, it's going to rotate back and forth. Uh, these guys are actually in the individual page itself. And there's my position main page, page one, page four. I've had I've experimented with several pages in here, as you can see. 
Uh, quick cues, I like to keep those guys around. See, there's my front light, my solo in the middle that I was showing you, and it's really, it says backlight, but it's more like down light. And it's down and back, I guess, so it doesn't matter. Whatever works. There's, um, let's see, I have, you know, my down movers, and then I have my side movers, so I can do this number right here, so I can adjust their intensity if I want. Do something like that. Anyway. Um, then I have my random effect circles. And note that, like I showed you before, I, I don't know if I remember if I showed this in the effect video, but as you see down here on the fader 8, as I pull it up, the effect goes faster and faster. Up to full speed right there. And then I have uh, mover chase. Let me skip that for a second. And then I have strobe out. And like I said, I can slowly move the fader up for that guy. And strobing gets faster and faster. Which, oh yeah, this one is similar to the strobe, but what I did, it's, it's a slower version. And it's just rotating between these guys, and it gives it this neat little, uh, gives it like a, a neat little run through, I guess you could say. Uh, now down to the move chaser. I didn't show this to you before, and I, perhaps this is a good time to show it to you. The chaser is, uh, it's two, it's a cue list. Think of it like that. And there's a button in the options where I can tell it to, yep, play it there, where it, it just jumps between the two. Think of it like that for right now. So on, let's say if I had someone magically just sitting here and jumping between these two guys. And this is what it ends up looking like. Jumping to between these two guys. Now if I, now it's, and this is true for the Hawk 4, you can have is a chase. And Hawk 3 has a way of doing this, I can't remember how. Because I haven't used it enough, this option enough in the Hawk 3 to remember. Honestly, you'd have to look it up in that manual. But I can hit play, and it automatically goes between the two. You can adjust the tempo by holding choose, uh, the choose button for the corresponding cue list. Holding down choose, that's what I'm doing right now. While holding it down, hit the play button. So to tap the tempo. It's like a tempo tap button if you're familiar with those kinds of features with other musical instruments and whatnot. Uh, let's see, so it'd be like, that'd be, let's say if the tempo was one, two, three, four, and hit, hold down choose and hit play, 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 play. Then when I, I'm happy, I can release the choose and play. And uh, I can make it go really fast. Play, 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 play. I can make it go really slow. Choose, play. Play, play, play. There you go. So, um, get the idea, hopefully, how the choose button works. And one thing to note about if you're going to do a choose like mine, I'm going to open up this the guts of this cue list here. And make sure that the lights you want off is at zero and the lights you want on is at 100. Because of tracking, you'll just it'll look funny. Uh, it won't look like the way you want it. Try it sometime without setting it to zero and you'll see what I mean. Uh, then the on the other cue list, just make sure on every cue list in a chase that you set everything that you want off to be off and everything that you want on to be on. It's just what I learned in the past. Uh, on my second pages, I have a fun. Let me turn that down. Down my chase. Let's see. Let me release that guy. Oh yeah, release. I thought I had a release so that way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like it should be releasing when I turn the uh, the cue list down. So, let's see, Rainbow Chase. It's just something I was screwing around with one day. Um, it's in the queue list as well. And I also have a queue list for Big Pan, so that, that way I can, if I just want a very slow, slight one, I want to increase the speed of it as I go along, I can do that. And I can even go full speed up there. Uh, and this one, let's see, I also have a queue list for um, the song Your Betrayal, and then I have like just an extra strobe for that song. This whole page was just for your betrayal. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. That's that's the setup. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is the setup. And I still have the uh, random colors going. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Yeah, or uh, if you know me, if you don't know me and you just found this video randomly online, um, you can always just send me a message through Gmail and through YouTube and all that. I leave a comment on the page. 
Uh, I will eventually get it, and I will get back to you as best I can and answer the questions. Um, hope this is helpful to somebody out there. Hopefully one of my friends who was posted using, using this. Oh, oh, I was going to show you the big pan button. Yeah, that's how it looks on mine. That's I perfected it after a while. Then if I just want to end it, and yeah, if I want to set the time for it with that. Uh, actually, I like two seconds. But yeah, like I was saying, if you need any help, um, just uh, shoot me a message. I'll be glad to help you out. Have a great day.